It was the end of third period when the lockdown alarm sounded at Washington High. My classmates and I exchanged uneasy glances. Was this a drill or a real emergency? Our algebra teacher, Mrs. Cole, sprang into action, quickly locking the classroom door and motioning for us to move away from the door and windows. Tommy Harris tried to laugh it off, but his nervous chuckling soon faded into tense silence along with the rest of us. We all flinched as the loudspeaker crackled to life. This is not a drill. We are in full lockdown. This is not a drill. Mrs. Cole's eyes went wide at the announcement. This was really happening. We could hear noises from the hallway outside. Panicked voices, frantic footsteps, doors slamming closed. My heart started racing as the reality sunk in. Was it an active shooter? A bomb threat? Our questions were soon answered by muffled popping noises that could only be gunshots. Several students started crying softly. My mind went blank with fear. This was the kind of nightmare I had only seen on the news from other schools. How could this be happening here? Now? Mrs. Cole spoke in a hushed, urgent tone. Everyone move to the corner away from the door. Be absolutely quiet. We quickly but silently complied, huddling together tightly. Tommy wrapped his arms around his girlfriend, Brianna, trying to comfort the quietly sobbing girl. Mrs. Cole joined us on the floor after turning off the lights, but left the door ajar as per lockdown protocol. In the semi-darkness of the classroom, the air seemed thick with dread. Every tiny noise made my heart skip a beat. Were the shots getting closer or moving farther away? Was the shooter just outside our room? I strained my ears but couldn't discern much over the sound of pounding heartbeats and occasional whimpers. One thing was certain, though. The shots were continuing in rhythmic bursts, only interrupted occasionally by bone-chilling screams. After ten agonizing minutes, we heard echoing sirens and hoped desperately that police were on scene. Shortly after, I thought I could make out heavy boots thudding down the hall along with shouted commands. The sobs around me turned to those of relief. Surely this nightmare was almost over. Suddenly, our door was thrown open violently. In the doorway stood a tall figure clad in black, clutching an assault rifle against his chest. Half his face was obscured by a mask, but his eyes that stared straight at us seemed crazed and empty. Without hesitation, he swiftly raised his weapon directly at us. I'll have to leave things ominously there due to the length requirements, but aim to establish an atmospheric real-world setting and believable American characters and dialogue. I incorporated escalating action and tension building to a peak moment. Please let me know if you would like me to modify or expand this horror story draft in any way. Constructive feedback is very welcome. I can't believe we're doing this, Brad muttered under his breath as we approached the deteriorating remains of Monroe High School. I rolled my eyes but couldn't keep from grinning nervously. Sneaking into the supposedly haunted ruins of our town's old high school was a crazy idea but we were bored small-town teenagers looking for adrenaline kicks. The school had been shut down unexpectedly three years prior after a tornado tore off part of the roof and caused massive water damage. Rumors immediately started circulating about strange noises and apparitions sighted in the abandoned hallways. The place took on a sinister, legend-like aura, especially amongst us high schoolers. Of course, Brad and I talked a big game about wanting to ghost hunt there one night but actually stepping onto the weed-choked school grounds in the cold moonlight, I felt my bravado rapidly fading. The looming three-story building seemed straight out of a horror movie, with most of the windows busted out and door frames ominously hanging loose. I hesitated at the bottom of the concrete steps leading to the front entrance. Brad scoffed. Scared already? I just think this is stupid and dangerous. The floors and stairs could give out, I protested. Stop being a wuss. People have explored this place tons of times. Look. Brad pushed open the warped front door with one hand. A long groan emanated from the shadowy foyer within. You coming or not? Against my better judgment, I stepped gingerly inside after him. My flashlight revealed debris-strewn hallways branching out on either side of us. Smashed fluorescent light fixtures dangled from the ceiling, glass crunching under our shoes. The pervasive smell of mildew made my nose twitch. We explored silently for a few minutes with no odd activity to report. Big bad ghosts must be on a smoke break, Brad snarked. I had just started loosening up when we entered the deserted cafeteria. 
Broken utensils were scattered across the floors and faded posters clung crookedly to walls, now covered in vulgar graffiti. As we passed by a set of foggy double doors, I paused. Hey, isn't that where the old pool used to be? I could just make out the shapes of empty bleachers beyond the grimy glass. Yeah, I think so. Brad yanked the reluctant door open, metal hinges screeching in protest. The shadowy outlines of a deserted natatorium soon surrounded us. Chipped tile floors with weeds poking through cracks, remnants of sun-bleached lifeguard stands. But something else caught my eye. There's still more to come as the suspense and action escalates. Let me know if you would like me to continue developing this horror story draft revolving around the exploration of an abandoned American school. I focused on establishing an eerie initial atmosphere and realistic lead characters. Please provide any feedback so I can improve and expand on this further. The shrill beep of the lockdown alarm jerked me from my sleepy days. As a student teacher at Willow Creek Elementary in rural Wisconsin, I was used to occasional fire drills or safety tests. But something felt different this time. A nervous tension hanging stale in the air as my third graders exchanged uneasy glances. All right, everyone. Line up quietly like we practiced, I instructed, trying to keep my voice steady. Could this just be a drill I hadn't heard about? The announcement system sputtered to life as my line of students shuffled towards the storage closet at the back reading nook. This is not a drill. The school is in full lockdown due to a dangerous intruder spotted on grounds. Teachers, secure your rooms immediately. Click. Gasps and whimpers rose from the children, wide eyes brimming with fear darting my way for guidance. These nightmarish emergencies only happened on the news, not here in Willow Creek nestled amongst acres of farmland. I felt my chest tighten but smiled reassuringly. It's okay, everyone. We get to have a big sleepover party in our secret fort now, I said brightly, ushering them into the cramped closet. My tone faltered slightly as I made eye contact with Timmy Stewart's piercing blue gaze. Timmy was on the autism spectrum, and panic was already creeping across his pale, freckled face. I made sure he was situated comfortably with his favorite stuffed animal before gently closing the door. In the stuffy darkness, with seventeen quietly sniffling third graders clinging to any available inch around me, I tried rocking Timmy soothingly while fishing my phone from my cardigan pocket. No signal. The old walls of this school were nearly two feet thick concrete, built decades ago as a nuclear fallout shelter before later being converted into an elementary school as the rural town grew. I always joked this place was sturdy enough to withstand the apocalypse. Now, that fortress-like construction sealed us off from the outside world and any clues about the rapidly escalating emergency. All I could do was wait helplessly in the dark, trying to keep my frightened students calm with uncertain reassurances. Time seemed to crawl by endlessly. The lockdown stretched on for almost two hours, though it felt like days confined in that tiny space breathing hot, dusty air. Miraculously, the kids stayed quiet the whole time, even energetic Timmy slipping into an eerie torpor. Finally, we felt the heavy thud of boots right outside, followed by a deafening bang against the door. I hope this establishes an unsettling but realistic initial scene. Please let me know if you would like me to continue developing this horror story draft set in a rural American school during a lockdown crisis. I focused on relatable characters and age-appropriate reactions. Any feedback you have would be greatly appreciated. The shrill scream of the lockdown alarm instantly silenced the chatter of my classmates. Roosevelt Academy was known for its state-of-the-art facilities, not surprising given that most students came from old money families. But all that technology apparently didn't preclude old-fashioned loud alarms blaring out of the ceiling speakers. Okay, everyone, let's stay calm and line up just like we practiced, Mrs. Novak called out, shutting the frosted glass door to the physics lab room and pulling down the window blinds. The dozen students in my AP class exchanged uneasy looks, but followed protocol, moving quickly to the far wall and huddling down facing away from the door windows. A mechanical click preceded, the stern voice of our headmaster echoing through the intercoms. Students and faculty, please remain where you are. We are in full lockdown due to a dangerous trespasser on campus grounds. 
Gasps and murmurs broke out among us before Mrs. Novak sternly reminded everyone to stay quiet. Bits of information circulated in hushed whispers. Someone spotted a masked man with a gun right outside the basketball gymnasium. Police were en route, but sweeping this elite campus nestled deep in upstate New York wilderness could take time. The full weight of the crisis sank in. This was really happening. Our insulated world of Ivy League ambition and privilege couldn't fully protect us from the violence and chaos seeping in. But how did an armed intruder get past the 12-foot perimeter fencing, guarded entrance gates, roving security patrols? For now, those unsettling questions would have to wait. The minutes crawled by at an agonizing pace. My mind raced as I strained to listen for any noise within our lab room or approaching from outside. The expensive thick oak doors should muffle most sounds though. Bellowing sirens eventually signaled the cavalry of law enforcement arriving. Now we silently prayed they would quickly neutralize this threat. A loud crash suddenly reverberated from down the hallway, sounding like a heavy classroom door being smashed open. Mia whimpered softly behind me before clamping her hand over her mouth. We all flinched involuntarily at the noise. More distant pounding boots and faint yelling filtered under the closed lab room door. Police searching nearby rooms? Or the intruder growing more violent? I risked a furtive glance at the slim vertical window built into the door itself. The shape racing past almost made my heart stop. 